All right. So <clears throat> let us go ahead and get started with Mirth Connect today. Yesterday, we did take a look at what are the various connection models that we can use in the integration space. So whenever you are developing any interface, we will uh, use various methodologies to transact data from one system to another. So today, we'll start with Mirth Connect. Mirth Connect is an integration tool that is used to um, transact HL7 messages from one system to another. Basically, it is kind of a middleware so that it will go ahead and pick the data from the database or it will receive HL7 messages from one system and write them to the database. Or it can just be a middleware or middleman to transact HL7 messages from one system to another system. So it can do all those middleware works, which is needed for uh, real-time HL7 interface implementations. So by the end of today's session, we'll see what is Math Connect, where do we use it. We'll uh, touch base on the architecture of Math Connect. We'll also look at various channel patterns, and we'll also talk about how to install Math Connect. Okay. So let's get started with uh, Merge Connect basic or the introduction to that. So as I just mentioned, Merge Connect is an integration tool, same like uh, many other integration tools available out in the market. So there are many different integration engines out there. Uh, Merge Connect is one of them. There are others like Rhapsody, Cloverleaf, CorePoint, Iguana, Integration Buddy, Data Connect, so there are many different different types of interface engines out there. Um, but Merth stands out from all of them in one factor that this is a freeware and open source software. Okay. If you look at the other ones, uh, they are uh, like Rhapsody or CorePoint or Cloverleaf. All of these are uh, quite costly and uh, and they are not open source. You can't even get a free trial to experiment or to understand or to learn or anything as such. Whereas Merth Connect is completely open source software, which you can go ahead and install if you want to add new features. Uh, you can go ahead and do that. And there are many other things that you can perform. Merth Connect is acquired by NextGen back in 2016. And uh, since then, it is being promoted as NextGen Connect, but the name Merth Connect is still there. So if you go to the website of NextGen and try to download or try to search for this software, it will still say that it is Merth Connect. Okay, and uh, this, all of these integration engines that I just mentioned are dedicatedly designed for healthcare data transactions. And Merth Connect is also designed for the same purpose. But in case if you have any data which is not healthcare related and if you know the concepts of how to transform the data or work with the data, then still you can use Merth Connect. It's not necessary that you have to use only for healthcare related transactions and all. So being a middleware, it should support various data structures or various data models, right? So Merth Connect does that purpose. Merth Connect supports HL7 v2, v3 transactions. It supports DICOM, it supports X12 messages, which is used for used by payer industry. It supports XML, JSON, NCPDP, delimited text, and so on. So there are various data formats that are supported by Merth Connect. Similarly, it being a middleware, it has to go ahead and transact the data from one system to another. So that's what we saw yesterday. So when it has to transact data from one system to another, it should support all the famous protocols that we have in today's industry to transact data from one system to another. So it supports all the type of connectors like <clears throat> TCP IP. It supports HTTP, file reader, file writer. It supports uh, sending out emails from Earth Connect is also possible. It also supports JavaScript. So if you are a good JavaScript, programmer, then you can write JavaScript code in source and destination or anywhere you need to perform various tasks. It supports FTP, SFTP, web services and databases and everything. Right? And then uh, we have something called as enterprise extension. Uh, so enterprise extension in Merth Connect is nothing but 
Mirth being a freeware, most of the features are free. But there are few features which are not present in the free open source software. So in case if you want those features, then you have to go ahead and purchase them. So there are various uh, purchase models or basically various plans like um, silver, gold and platinum. You can go with any one of them based on your need. So there are various factors how they differ. But the basic thing is that there are few plugins that will be necessary. Few plugins that you may need in case you are, if you are using HTTP or TCP IP. And uh, there are few plugins where, which will dictate or which will tell you how to go ahead and use the user management. So these kind of plugins are not available within the free open source software. So how do you get them? You have to go with any one of the plans. So how, to what extent do we need these features? So it depends purely on the scenario, purely on the type of interface that you are impl implementing, uh, purely on um, the requirement that you have, how many team members you have and all. So let's take a look at a couple of them. Number one is SSL manager. SSL manager is a, uh, is a plugin that is used to go ahead and bind your REST API with an SSL certificate. So if your REST service is not bound by SSL certificate, then it is um, prone to attacks because the data is being transacted without encryption. So this is one of the essential features that we need in case if you're planning for REST API transactions. Similarly, you have role-based access control. So role-based access control is something that will help us to manage the users. Who can do what in the system? Let's say in case if uh, someone has to go ahead and just log in and view the channels, but they we don't want them to do anything, meaning that we don't want them to edit the channels, look at the code or anything as such. But in free open source uh, option, we we just do not have any user management at all. All that you have is any user who logs in is called as uh, admin and that particular person can do anything and everything within the software. Okay, so role-based access control is necessary when you feel that we have a lot of uh, resources who will be accessing the system and we want to know who did what and we also want to control on who has to do what. So for that purpose, role-based access control is uh, very much necessary, but that is something that you'll get once you buy the basic plan. Then you have channel history. Channel history is nothing but uh, a feature which will help you to revert the channels to the older versions. So this is also not present in the basic version. So apparently, uh, if you feel that you need this, then that is when you have to go with these options okay but uh, let me tell you one more thing here many people all around the world are using mirth as a free openware itself without uh, open source itself without having all of these features there are various alternate ways to manage them like for SSL manager you can use a reverse proxy for role-based access control, that is something uh, we cannot do anything for that. Uh, but it's kind of people are okay to ha have their team members as admins. So management is there without any issues. But still, if you really need other features, there are many other plugins. I, I just mentioned about a couple of them here. But there are many other plugins that will perform various tasks like cluster manager. Uh, basically, cluster administrator is another plugin that is there. If you want to maintain clusters of Marit Connect, then that is something that we have to choose. And there are many other fire plugins is one more plugin that is there. So if you want to build fire uh, objects, then you can use fire plugin. So even that is not present uh, in the freeware. So in that way, there are a few things that are there. Uh, but not very much essential that you have to go ahead and purchase them. Now let us take a look at the architecture of Mirth Connect. 
So on the right, what you're seeing is called Merth Connect Administrator. So whenever you log into the system, this is what you see, right? And uh, the lists that you're seeing here are list of channels. Each channel is nothing but one interface. Okay, if you are connecting a source and a destination and the data has to transact through the channel and that one channel is called one interface. You can also call it as a bridge or you can call, also call it as tunnel. So in most of the integration engines, they have their own naming convention to represent an interface. For example, if you go to Ensemble, uh, we call them as production. In Rhapsody, we call them as route. In Merth Connect, we call them as channel. In integration body, we call them as profile. So the naming convention has been given based on the product. But at the end of the day, all of them are representing one single thing, which is nothing but um, which is nothing but a channel or which is nothing but an interface in general. Okay. So here we are seeing that we have list of interfaces, TCP IP source, multiple OBX to XML is one interface, test training TCP IP is another interface. So there are various interfaces that we can see here. Now, when we talk about each interface or each channel, so we'll be referring to channel going forward. When I, when I say channel, I am referring to an interface. Okay. So if you talk about one channel's architecture, each channel contains four components. And you have these components as source, filters, transformers, and destinations. These are the four components that you will have for every channel. Source is the one where you will receive the data on and then pass it on to filters and then pass it on to transformers and then to destinations. One thing to keep in mind here is that source will always be only one source. We'll be receiving the data on one source for each channel. But in case, if you want to send that same message to multiple destinations, you can go ahead and do that. So in a channel, there is not just one destination possible. If you want to create more destinations, you can go ahead and create that. We'll see more on that later. But just to let you know that there is a possibility of having multiple destinations. I just mentioned that here. Okay. So let us go ahead and take a deeper look at this architecture, this design. So it is kind of a linear architecture. Messages will pass on from source to filters to transformers and to destinations. Okay, so the way we are going to take a look at it is we will be zooming in to this particular scope and we will try to see how a message passes on or transacts through this particular channel. Okay, so we'll slowly, slowly zooming in and try to understand the features that we have at each point. Okay, so let's take a little deeper look we will be going deeper and deeper as and when we progress through the training. So first we will take a look at high level of this channel architecture. So if you look at the channel, Merth Connect channel, you can see that we have two components. Merth Connect channel is divided into two sections. First one is source, second one is destination. So when the message arrives or when the data is being extracted, it will enter into the source connector or it will source connector will be the means to receive the data. Once source receives the data, it will pass on the data to source filters and validations and source transformers. So now if you observe in the earlier slide, I mentioned that every channel has four components, source, filters, transformers and destination. Now if you look at this one, we are seeing that source has its own dedicated filters and transformers. And once all of those components are completed, then it will enter into the destination side of it. On the destination side, you can see that destination has its own filters and transformers. And once all the filters and transformers are completed, logics are executed, then destination will deliver the message to the required destination. Okay, so that is the flow. Another important point here is that whenever we are playing with the message in filters and transformers, either on source side or on the destination side, we'll be using three different uh, technologies. One is JavaScript to play with the data, like uh, 
like slicing the data or checking the length and doing certain action or moving the data elements from one field to another field or uh, forming a JSON object from an HL zone message. So in this way, there are many different things that you can do within Merth Connect Transformer. All right. So in order to do them, you will need JavaScript. Second thing that we need to know is we'll be using E4X and XML. When the data is present in these source filters and transformers, it is present in the form of XML object. Why and all, we'll see that later, uh, but it will be present in the form of an XML object. So we need E4X. E4X is ECMAScript for XML. It is a methodology which is used by JavaScript to access XML objects. Okay, so if you are new to it, don't worry. We are going to look at them from the basics. We'll see what is XML. We'll understand what is XML object. We'll see what is E4X. Why do we use E4X? We'll have some examples to understand how we can use them. And obviously, I'm going to teach JavaScript from basics. Not completely JavaScript, but the topics that are essential for our math integrations. Next, let us take a look at uh, various channel patterns that we can create in Mirth Connect. Okay, so Mirth Connect as a channel uh, can be created in many different ways. So here are a few ways. So let's talk about each one of them. So before we jump into the channel patterns, any questions from anyone? All right, so I'm not hearing anything, so let's go ahead and uh, continue. So first pattern is integration pattern. So this is the simplest one. So whenever you have any channel, this is the one that you get when you create a channel. If you want additional configurations like multiple destinations and all, then you have to add them. But when you create a basic channel, this is what we get. So when a message is, or when a message is transacting through the this channel, it will be received on the source and it will pass on to the source filters and transformers and it will pass on to destination filters and transformers and then it will send it to the database. Let's say that we are receiving a result message. The result HL7 message is received. The message will be interpreted and that will be returned to the database finally. Next we have broadcast. So as the name itself suggests, it is going to broadcast the one single message to multiple destinations. So let's take a scenario. Let's say that we have a uh, we have a PM system and multiple EHR systems, not just one EHR, but multiple EHR systems. PM will go ahead and try to send a message, which is nothing but a demographic message or a patient registration message. As soon as the message is registered, it will be received by the integration engine and it will pass on to source filters and transformers. The basic default nature of Merth Connect is that once the source transformer is completed, if there are multiple destinations, then the same message will be replicated to all the destinations that we have. Okay, so in this scenario, you can see that we have three different destinations, each one representing one EHR system. Okay. So in our example that we were considering, an ADD demographic message is received, and as soon as it is received, the same demographic message will be duplicated or replicated and will be sent to all the three destinations. So this is called broadcast. Whenever you have such need of sending messages from one source to multiple destinations, that's when you will add the destinations and then use this pattern. Okay. Next we have router. So router pattern is a little different from broadcast. Let's see uh, how router is helpful in real time world. So now let us take a scenario for this one as well. Let's say the lab is sending results back to EHR systems. And there are 10, 15 EHR systems who are sending orders to the lab. Lab wants to return back all the results immediately. So lab has an interface on Merth Connect. And there is only single source because for lab, all the 
request that they are receiving is orders and results. But they have to deliver back the message to their own designated EMR systems or EHR systems. Right? So what lab people will do is they will create one single channel and have multiple destinations on that. And that single channel will go ahead and receive messages or um, the results from the lab system. Once it receives it, it will complete source side of transactions. I did not depict the source filters and source transformer here. So just assume that it is completed in this source component itself. Now, once the source component is completed, then the default behavior of Mirth Connect is what? It will go ahead and replicate the same message to all the destinations that it has. So if it has multiple destinations, the same message will be duplicated to all the three of them. So once it's duplicated, now who has to take responsibility to validate whether the message belongs to that particular destination or not? That's where destination filters will come into play. So here, there will be some logics which will, which will tell you whether the message has to pass or get filtered. Okay, so let's say we have a result received which belongs to EHR2. Let's say that this is EHR2. Okay, now the default behavior of Mirth Connect is receive the message and then duplicate to all the three destinations which, which it did. So the second message that we received has been duplicated to all three destinations. Now in the filters, what logic we write is, they will look at some flag from the message and determine whether this particular message belongs to this particular destination or not. So in our case, we are talking about EHR systems, right? Three different EHR systems. So it will check whether the message belongs to this EHR system or not. How? Either by looking at a message three, four, five, six or by looking at the account number, or by looking at some other value within the HL7 message. So if it belongs to EHR, if the logic succeeds, then it will pass on the message to transformations and then it will be delivered to destination. But in our scenario, the message belongs to EHR2. So the message will come in and in this uh, destination transformer logic, it will fail, right? So it will get filtered. Now in the second channel, it will succeed because the message was successful um, and belongs to this particular destination. So it will pass on the message to destination transformers and from there it will be written to the database. Then you have the third destination. Same message will be sent to third destination as well, right? Because it is basically duplicated to all the three destinations. And the third destination, it will go ahead and filter the message and then it will go ahead and transact the message. Um, sorry, it will go ahead and stop the message. It won't transact because it has got filtered here itself, right? So destination transform will not receive anything and situation will be the same. Um, there will be no change. So that's how the router model will help us to go ahead and filter the message and route the message accordingly. So uh, Dixon, yeah, in Chandra. that case, so if, if message fails, we'll get some uh, error message, right? And right. We, as we discussed in the router scenario, mm -hmm. so you mentioned, I mean, uh, uh, one single order, uh, it will filter at in three stages. So in the first scenario, uh, 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 as we discussed, the first scenario, the message was failed. Mm -hmm. the, same, the third also failed. So unnecessarily, mm -hmm. we receive error messages, right? No, no, no. It is getting filtered. It is not mm -hmm. getting errored. Filtered okay. is different. Errored is different. Okay. Error it's is nothing. Throw any no, no. It will, it will, it will show up that message has been routed to three destinations. In destination okay. one and destination three, it got filtered. It will show you the status that it is filtered, and in destination okay. two, it will be sent. It will be showing as sent successful. Oh, got it, got it. Yeah. All right. Any other questions from anyone? I heard someone else talking as well. Okay. All right. So let's continue. So the next one that we have is chaining model. So in chaining model, 
you can connect one or more channels together and form a chain of channels. Okay, so let's see how that works. So let's say you have a requirement where a message is, a result message is received from lab. So hospital is receiving them. Obviously, hospital has to write the data to the EHR database. That is common. But alongside, they also want to generate a PDF file along with that particular message. Then they can go ahead and take this approach of having chain of channels. So what happens in chain of channels is you may have two destinations or one single destination. Anything is fine. But the destination will be pointing to another channel altogether within the same Merth server instance. When I say another channel, it doesn't mean that you have two different servers. There will be channel or another server and you will not be able to connect to that. I'm talking about the channel within the same Merth server instance. So this channel will go ahead and receive the data from the previous channel and it will have its own dedicated work to do with that particular message. So in this use case that we are talking about, a result message will arrive onto the source and they will pass on through filters, transformers, and they will say they will be sent to destination. So when we talk about destination, we have two destinations here. So first destination, it will write the data to the database. Second destination will route the message or send the message to another channel altogether, which is called as uh, the secondary channel, let's say that, or PDF channel, let's say that. And it will receive the message. It will pass it on to filters and transformers and then write the data to any other folder by generating all of those PDF files for each result. Okay. So in this way, we can go ahead and create many kind of channel patterns or channel um, chaining mechanisms. It purely depends on your business requirement. Now, many ask me a question, which pattern we have to follow? There is no steadfast rule that you have to follow this pattern. Depending on the requirement that you have, depending on the interfaces that you are going to develop, we may be choosing any one of these uh, patterns. Okay, and these are just common patterns that I am showing. It's not a rule that only these patterns have to be uh, followed or these has to be taken into consideration while developing an interface. Then how will we get to know which is the best approach? So it, it comes through experience. As in when you develop the interfaces and progress with the uh, development part of it, learn more about it, slowly you will understand what are the important things that you have to keep in mind while designing the interfaces. So first part that we do while when we get an interface is uh, to go ahead and design that uh, interface. So during that design discussion, we'll clearly discuss on how, what approach we need to have. And this is something that will be done at architect's level. So if you're a new developer or uh, intermediate developer, then we don't need to worry much about this point uh, at, uh, at the moment. You can follow whatever architectures that you get. But slowly as you develop, at least for one year, you will get a fair idea on what is the best approach to create an interface. Okay. So next, let us take a look at um, the Mirth Connect application itself. So we also have one other concept like the looking at the message flow in Mirth Connect. So this is something that we will take a look at in the upcoming uh, days or upcoming course. We are definitely going to take a look at the message flow at that point. At this moment, we don't need that because we don't know how application will look like, how the message would travel through the application and all. So we are going to take a look at that at that point of time. So let me bring up Mirth Connect and then we will <clears throat> go through the actual application itself. So here you can see that as soon as you log in, this is the screen that you get. So this is called as Mirth Connect Administrator. So whenever you log in, there are three different components that you will get with Mirth Connect. One, Mirth Connect Administrator. Second one is Mirth Connect Server Manager. Third one is Mirth Connect Administrator Launcher. These are the three pieces that you will get whenever you install Mirth Connect. Let's see what is the use of them, right? Uh, we will understand, try to understand each one of them one by one. 
but first we will take a look at administrator. So Merth Connect administrator will help us to go ahead and work or this is our client facing application you can say where you'll have uh, you'll be able to manage your interfaces track your interface messages and do a lot of things so the first screen that you will hit is dashboard window so in the dashboard screen you can see that we have uh, this upper half of the section which is going to show you all the channels that are actively running right now it is blank which means there is no active channel that is running so let me bring up a couple of channels just for you to show So let's deploy this one, this one, this one. Let's deploy these three channels. All right. So as you can see, there are three interfaces that are running. One is JS, uh, CSV to JSON convertible, which means it is going to convert a JS, CSV uh, object into a JSON object. Next, you have HL7 message to EHR database. So this channel is going to receive HL7 messages and write them to the EHR database. And this is some uh, basic JavaScript testing about the switch case on how it is working, what we can do with that and all. But at the end of the day, the, the administrator will tell you what are the active channels that are running within the system. So at any point, you can go ahead and take a look at them and understand whether the messages are transacting through that or not. And you have few columns here, right? You have status, you have revisions, you have last deployed. So let's understand about each one of these uh, columns. We'll come back to the status column in a bit. Let's complete this side here. So last deployed will indicate when exactly the channel got activated. So deployed is nothing but activating a channel. Okay. So this is the term that we'll be using entirely through the course and through the training as well. Whenever I say deploy, it means that we are talking about activating a channel. Okay, just keep that in mind. So last deployed date and time will tell you when exactly it got activated um, last time. So we can see that I just started and deployed this channel, deployed and started this channel, right? So which is nothing but 810 my time, two minutes ago. Next, you have a few statistics here. These statistics, these statistics will help you to go ahead and count or track the number of messages that are transacting through the interfaces. Okay. So if you see, we have 716 messages. Okay. Give me one minute. How come we have 716 messages? Let me check something here. Okay. Anyway. So we have 716 messages that we have received and out of them only 348 were sent across to the destination. And we can see that there are 368 messages that got filtered. Oh, sorry, that got errored out, not filtered. And in the filter section, we don't have any message that got filtered because there is no filter logic at all to see and stop the message. So all the messages were sent to destination out of them. 348 got processed successfully and 368 are added out. So this will help us to track down the number of requests that we are receiving or number of HL7 messages that we are receiving and transacting them to the destination system. Okay, so statistics are very, very helpful. Queued is nothing but you can queue a message in case if the destination is not reachable. So we'll talk more about queuing when we build a channel for TCP IP related uh, interface. And finally, you have connection. It will tell you whether you are connected to source or destination. Just an additional information there. Next, you have status. So this is important. So if you look at status, there are three different statuses that you can use. Okay, one is started, which means channel is actively running. Second one is stopped, which means the channel is not running at all. Third one is um, paused which means only one of the components is stopped. What do I mean by one of the components? Let's take a little deeper look at this channel. When we were looking at the architecture of the channel, I told you that every channel has two components, source and destination, right? Let us go ahead and see how to find them. So if you see this channel, CSV to JSON, or right, 
and click on this plus symbol, you can see that we have two components in the channel. Always remember, every channel has these two components. They are two separate components which will operate individually, but still execute together always. Okay. So, we have two components here, source and destination. So, that is how we determine uh, how many destinations we have. If you have more number of destinations, let me see if you have an example right now, not in one of these channels, but if you have more number of destinations, then it will show all of those destinations here in the channel, indicating what are the essential uh, components that we have as part of a channel. So, when I say paused, it means that I am indicating that only source side of the interface is paused. Let's see that. So, first I'll stop the channel. You can right click and click on stop. That is one option. Or if you even if you select a certain channel, on the left hand side you have the same options what you get when you right click. So, I'll right click, I will stop. So, the interface is stopped. Right? You can see that it is stopped. CSV to JSON converter will is not running. Now, if I want to go ahead and start the channel, I can go ahead and start. Okay, so the channel got started. Now, there is another third option that I said, which is nothing but pause. So, if you observe what happened during the pause. So, during the pause, we have stopped the source side of the channel which means source connect, source component is completely halted. Destination is still running. So it will do its work continuously without any halt. But source will not be ready to receive any more new messages because source component is completely stopped. So what do I mean by that? When do we need this particular scenario? Especially during testing, we don't want to receive any messages from source, for example. Let's say you are connected to the database and database uh, is continuously... Uh, having data and when your channel is pulling the data from database it is continuously getting the data and it is not allowing you to test manually so what you can do you can pause the channel so that it won't pick up source size data anymore you can go ahead and provide your data manually and test it through the channel this is one mechanism right or one use not mechanism but or one use of having uh, paused the channel so next uh, we have is, let's say we have received hundreds of messages all at once into Mirth Connect. So Mirth Connect is a tool, but it will also take time to process one message each, right? At least a milliseconds. So if you receive 10,000 messages at once, then what will happen? So how will Mirth handle that? So Mirth will keep on processing all the messages. It will try to keep up the speed, but what if we are receiving 10,000 messages in a minute? Then in that case, the administrator or the interface implementer will take a call and say that, let's stop the channel on the source side and let us pass the messages on the destination side first, even before releasing or receiving more number of messages. Okay. So that is another scenario where you can think how you can make use of pause. So basically, it will represent that the source component is stopped. So those are the three representations of the statuses. And down here you have the server log. So there are three tabs here, <clears throat> server log, connections, globals. Server log will tell you any log information that you're writing during the code or if anything is going wrong within the channel, this server log will help us to uh, provide the errors from technical perspective. So in case if you have to troubleshoot if some channel is not sending any message, so you may definitely have an error here, which you may try to pull out. So if you see this error, let's uh, pull it out. And see what that error says. Now you can see that fail to poll messages 
poll for messages from the database in channel database reader. And what is the reason? You can see that it says subquery return more than one value. This is not permitted when subquery follows greater than or less than. So that's the main reason why this message got failed. So when this channel is trying to transact a message, it is getting this error. Right? So then what I'll do, I'll go ahead and review my subquery to see if that is true. And then I will go ahead and correct whatever is necessary within the query. So that way, this particular aspect of errors in the server log will help us to determine and troubleshoot and figure out what is a problem and then apply a fix to it. Both can be done. Okay. Then let us go back to connection logs. So in connection logs, you will be able to see whether the source and destinations are connecting, whether the channel is running or not, whether the channel is functional or not. So every channel, you can choose that channel and it will show what happened with that channel in the last few minutes. So connection log, by looking at that, we can clearly determine whether the connections are working or not. Then you have global maps. Global maps are global variables. So we'll talk about this one when we get into the concept of variables, channel map variables, and all in Math Connect. Okay. So dashboard is always used to go ahead and show up the main channels that are actively running. And on the left hand side, you have channel management tasks. So if you select a certain channel, if you want to start the channel, you can do it from here, stop that channel. Undeploy is nothing but deactivating the channel. Okay, you see that that is gone away. The channel is not present anymore. Right, uh, we will talk in future about send message, view message and remove all. Uh, when we actually get to processing the messages, that is when we'll go ahead and get started with them. So that being said, this is one of the components that we get when we are installing Mirth Connect. The second one that we get is Mirth Connect Server Manager. Okay, so you can just go to Start Mirth Connect Server Manager. You can click on that. Sorry, I clicked on Mirth Connect Server. We need to click on Mirth Connect Server Manager. So once you click on Mirth Connect Server Manager, in the system tray, in the bottom right corner, you will see that there is an option to click on an icon called M. So let me share my screen that is showing up on my primary window. So let me show that. Can you guys see my screen, the primary window? Yeah. Okay. So here, if you see this one here, you can see that we have Mirth Connect. And if you double click on that, it will open a console like this called Mirth Connect Server Manager. So let's see what options we have therein with Mirth Connect Server Manager. So if you look at this one, we have four tabs, service, server, database, info. So service is nothing but how um, this is the service that will actually help you to run the channel. So as this is a Windows based application, what this service would do is it will help us to go ahead and have an additional service within the services.msc to control uh, the running of Merge Connect application altogether. So what you can do is if you want to restart the service, you can go ahead and restart from here or you can go ahead and restart it from services.msc. So every application in Windows, I mean, uh, most of the application in Windows will have a service. So what the service will do is it will take that application and it will help the application to sit in the Windows operating system so that when Windows is running and if the service is turned on and running, the application will also run. Okay, so if you go and see, we have Mirth Connect service, it says the status is running. So the service is running, which means Mirth Connect is running actively. If you want to stop the service, you can go ahead and do that. The moment you stop the service, you won't be able to work on administrator anymore. Okay, if you 
see you got the error it says the merge connect server training is not is no longer running please start it and log in again right that is because of the fact that we have just stopped the service you can click on start it then the entire merge application gets restarted so at times there will be a need where we want to go ahead and restart the service in that case we can go ahead and use these options Okay, it will take some time for the service to come up. But anyway, we'll talk about the rest of the tabs tomorrow and continue with that. And take a look at other options that are present in Merge Connect, especially about the channels window. What are the various options that we have in channels window and so on. Okay. So we'll halt or we'll close for today and we'll continue tomorrow. I'll open up for questions. Any questions from anyone? Listen, uh, what is the latest version of uh, Mix Connect? Uh, it's uh, four dot two, I guess. Um, so I will show you the installation part tomorrow. But yeah, I think it's four dot two. That is the latest. Let's see. Give me one second. So if you want to see the latest one, all that you can do is uh, go to Merth Connect installation. It will take you to the next gen website where you can download the installs. And here you can see that which version you have. We have 4.1.1, not 4.2. That's the latest one that we have. Okay, but if you want to go to archives, you can go to an archives and download older versions as well, just in case if you need any of them. Okay. Any other questions from anyone? Hey, Dixon. <coughs> hey, Ram. Uh, yeah. uh, what is the default group in the dashboard? Good question. So, um, I'm logged out of Merth Connect. Yeah, there is a concept called grouping. We did not get there yet. Tomorrow, once we are looking into the channels window, today we looked at dashboard, right? Yes. Sir. Tomorrow, when we look at dash channels window, I'll explain about what is grouping. Basically, it is used to organize the channels in a proper way instead of having uh, channels in a plain, simple list of channels. Okay, I'll show you how to create a okay, group, okay. how to create a channel. Basically, you can group the channels based on message types. You can be, group the channels for one single client. You can group the channels based on uh, certain order types. So that way, you can go ahead and combine few channels and put them under one group so that it will be okay. easy for management. That's the main purpose of having the groups. Okay, okay thank you. Yep, no problem. Any other questions from anyone? All right, I'm not hearing anything. So let us go ahead and conclude today's session here. We'll continue tomorrow and take a look at um, the other aspects of channels window. We'll also talk about the server manager. We'll also talk about Merth Connect Administrator Launcher, why it is used and all. And we'll also see the installation process. All right, guys. Thank you, everyone. You all have a very good day. We'll catch up uh, tomorrow morning.